Military veterans, what are your best stories from boot camp or basic training? Story 1. One thing that everyone must know about drill sergeants is that they are masters of wordplay. I had one who loved making bets with any soldier he could. They often were impossible to win, such as offering donuts if half the platoon scored 300 on the next PT test when the average was only about 220. But we were determined to win one of his bets before we graduated, so we took every offer he gave. One such bet he made, and I quote, if we have no failures on our next PT test, I will personally make you all chocolate chip cookies. Eager to prove ourselves and get something other than crappy DFAC food for a change, we quickly agreed. Lo and behold, the day after our test, he called the platoon into the bay as he grinned evilly from ear to ear. He revealed with delight that we had no failures and that we had won the bet. So I guess that means I'm making you chocolate chip cookies. Get into PTs and report to the PT field in five mics. We looked at each other in confusion, then looked to him for clarification, but he had already disappeared. We formed up on the PT field, which was a massive pit filled with rubber chips. Drill sergeant walks outside, still devilishly grinning, which was when we knew we had been duped. He puts us at attention and walks around the side of the building for a minute, returning dragging a garden hose. He proceeded to spray the platoon as we stood helplessly at attention, soaking everyone from head to foot. Once everyone was soaking and miserable, we slowly crawled the PT field up and back, up and back, on our stomachs, on our backs, on our sides, getting thoroughly covered in the rubber chips. Our commander walked out and inquired what was going on. Without skipping a beat, DS replies, Well, sir, we made a bet that if there were no PT failures, I would make them chocolate chip cookies. So now they're chocolate chip cookies. The CO stood and laughed for several minutes before calling out Top and a few other drill sergeants to enjoy the sight of 50 soaking wet privates miserably dragging themselves across the field. That was when we learned that you never ever truly win a bet with a drill sergeant. Story 2 There was a recruit who I'll call Private P. On the first day of basic training, our company was being briefed by the battalion commander and sergeant major. Private P stood up and announced that he wanted to quit. What followed was an absolute crap show. They wouldn't let him quit, and from then on, he was a target of abuse from the drill sergeants and fellow recruits. Over time, his behavior became more and more concerning. He always just stared off into space, wouldn't talk to anybody, and if anybody made fun of him or ticked him off, he'd pull out his notebook. We were all required to have one and write something in it. One day after we had been at the rifle range to practice for qualification, we were inside the barracks conducting weapons maintenance when our senior drill sergeant told us to get the F outside ASAP. We were put in formation and ordered to strip down for a search and shakedown. Obviously, we asked what was going on, and one of the senior drill sergeants held up a live round. Live rounds are never, ever supposed to leave the range in basic training, and grabbed Private P and brought him in front of the company. He was crying, and the drill sergeant started screaming at him. We still didn't know exactly what had happened, and then the MPs came and took him away. Turns out he had smuggled six live rounds, and he had written in his notebook his plan to end the lives of his three platoon drill sergeants, our company commander and first sergeant, and end his own life. We speculated he was never going to go through with it, and just wanted to get kicked out, but you never know. That was the last we saw or heard of him. This is like a full metal jacket alternate ending. Story 3 A cousin of mine was going through training for the Royal Australian Navy. They have leader cadets amongst their ranks, whom you must refer to as leader, and not sir. One of these leaders was prowling about and asked my cousin if he was all sorted out. Yes sir, my cousin said in reflex. What the F did you say, cadet? 20 push-ups, right now. My cousin, you should know, is a massive crap stirrer, couldn't help himself. Yes, sir, he says, getting down to do the push-ups. Fifty push-ups, the leader barks. The way he told me the story, the timing was just perfect. Yes, sir. So he had to do a hundred push-ups. His arms gave out around seventy, apparently. Later on, they were doing open water survival training, floating about in a blow-up raft in the middle of the ocean. The leaders, who were submerged below the raft in scuba gear, would occasionally leap up and drag a cadet into the water to simulate being knocked overboard by a wave. Sure enough, the leader my cousin had crossed was under the boat. 
He burst out like a shark, seized my cousin by his collar, and dragged him into the freezing water. Holding him down for longer than was probably necessary, the leader eventually released him. As my cousin was climbing back into the raft, shuddering from the cold, the leader asked him, Still think you're funny, cadet? As you can guess, the reply was, Yes, sir. He got grabbed and pseudo-drowned again immediately. I guess he's a glutton for punishment. He passed training, by the way. Story 4 I'm an army vet. One morning in basic training, it was about midway through our three-month cycle, and we were lined up for breakfast chow. While waiting in line, we had to stand at parade rest in columns of two in our PT uniform. We couldn't move or anything at the risk of being pointed out and screamed at. The uniform consisted of somewhat black short shorts and a gray t-shirt that said army on the front. Well, three guys in front of me had one of those no reason arousals, and the drill sergeant caught him as he was trying to move it to hide it away. He pulls him off to the side and starts screaming. What is wrong with you, private? Why are your privates saluting in the chow line? Of course, this yelling spread to the ears of two other drills, and they came over as well. Hey, battle, come look at this. Hey, at ease that crap, private. As this was said, they noticed, and one drill sergeant bent down, face inches away from the full-mast culprit, and bellowed, At ease! Private, you better get that crap in check. I entered the building before I could hear anything else about it. To this day, I still don't know how the drill sergeants went through that without so much as a smirk. I don't know what I'd do if someone shouted, At ease! directly at my morning wood. Nothing in life so far has prepared me for that. Story 5 the Navy man here got a few great ones for everybody. Spring of 2011, whole birthing in the shower together singing It's Raining Men when the RDC, recruit division commander, E4 and above, comes in and screams, You swinging dongs got about 20 seconds before I come in and rain my boot up your butt. Large black Navy chief, E7, walks into our compartment one day and says he feels like making it rain. Oh God, please no. Then, before I could get ready, he's already dropping people on the deck and making them do intense exercises. He walks up to one recruit and asks him, Does Chief like Hennessy or Hypnotic? Hennessy, Chief. Wrong, you racist. I like Jack Daniels. Then proceeds to turn up the PT on this individual. Next person is, Is Chief good at basketball or football? Basketball. Wrong. Chief is good at everything. Another time we were offered ice cream for supper one Sunday, we all took the ice cream because, well, we deserved it. We knew we were going to pay for it, so I got the bright idea to put all the wrappers on my tray. So we walk in a straight line to throw our trays away, and the RDCs are looking for any signs of ice cream. Then they come to me as I'm throwing away the wrappers. Recruit, did you eat 60 ice cream bars? Yes, Chief, every one of them. Story 6 the first couple weeks of boot are full of medical and dental exams, and if you need a procedure, you get it done right there. Tons of guys had their wisdom teeth pulled, and we had one guy come back right before lights out with his mouth full of gauze and loopy from the drugs. Our DI called us all to the center of the room, formed us up, and then told us to sit Indian style on the floor, and that recruit, Toothy, was going to tell us a bedtime story. He pulled up a chair for Toothy, and then told him to tell us the story of the Battle of the Monitor and Merrimack. Toothy mumbled that he didn't know the story, so the DI told him to just make it up, and for every fact that he got wrong, we'd get to sleep an extra five minutes in the morning. What followed was like a live episode of drunk history, minus any factual accuracy. As best as Toothy could recall, the Monitor was British, the Merrimack was Old Ironsides, and that in the end, they shot the crap out of each other, and everybody perished. The end. We were all dying laughing, but the D.I. sat there stone-faced. After Toothy was done, D.I. just stood up and said, That is exactly how it happened. Well done. Got up, turned off the lights, and walked out. Story 7 Probably the only fun night I had was basic in about our third week. We were out in the field, doing training and staying out in the woods for a week, and one of our drill sergeants came up to us and told us he wanted us to steal the other company's guide, flag the company uses to identify themselves in front of formations. He equipped us with duct tape and rope and told us to give them a check. Once it became nightfall and soldiers had gone into their tents to sleep, we made our move. We snuck through the tree line and even found their night guard. We tackled them both to the ground and duct taped their mouths shut, then moved to a tree and tied them up. The search for the guide began. 
We went through a bunch of tents, tied in and sacking people until we finally found it. Once we got it, we ran back to our area and handed it to our drill sergeant. In reward, the following Sunday of us getting back, he let us sleep two hours in, which is a huge thing when you're always sleep deprived. Story 8. I had the pleasure of witnessing this one myself. At the end of the chow line, the MTIs have a table called the snake pit. The MTIs randomly pull out trainees and question them on stuff we're supposed to know. One day, they pulled out one poor sap from our brother's flight. It went roughly as follows. Trainee, what is the insignia of the full colonel? Uh, the insignia of the colonel is the bird, sir. What type of bird exactly? Permission to adjust, sir? Adjust. Trainee then proceeds to set his tray on their table, puts his hands up in the Egyptian pose, but with both hands outward, turns his head to the side and says, Like this, sir. The onlooking T.I.s nearly choked on their food, while the questioning T.I. stared at him dumbfoundedly for a few moments, before yelling at him to get his crap off of their table and get the F out of their sight. Oh, that was probably one of the best times I've seen a T.I. at a loss for words. Story 9 We had a drill sergeant make a private carry a branch everywhere she went, so it would replenish all the oxygen she was wasting. We had a guy named Fitzwater, we called him Fatswater. We weren't just calling him just because he was fat, he was. He was a lazy piece of crap who was constantly pretending to be hurt to get out of work. Anyway, he peed at us one day and said, If anyone calls me Fatswater again, I'm going to tell drill sergeant. Immediately, the drill sergeant walks in and goes, Hey, what's up, Fatswater? A mother of one of the other privates sent him a photo of a drill sergeant trashing a locker with a letter saying, Hope your drill sergeant isn't as mean as this. Turns out that it was a picture of our drill sergeant. He had posted on Facebook that ended up going viral. She was just looking up pictures of drill sergeants and it happened to be him. Story 10. Brother was in basic, but he doesn't go on the internet. He was in the chow hall and witnessed a TI, authority figure, call out someone who had placed their flashlight in their belt. I guess you're not supposed to do that. So the TI lights him up. Is that where you keep your flashlight? Is it a freaking lightsaber, Luke? He made him stand at the end of two cafeteria lines, holding his flashlight like a lightsaber and striking dead the airmen that were leaving the two lines. At one point, there was a lull in traffic and the TI screams, Oh, so lightsabers don't make noise when they're motionless? So old buddy has to make the noise as he waits for his next victim. Sir, a Jedi doesn't activate his lightsaber if there aren't enemies afoot, sir. Story 11. When I was on Paris Island, we were drilling on the parade deck and this one recruit kept messing up. Our drill instructor stopped us, stalked up to the recruit and started wearing them out. Gave him the classic D.I., screaming in both ears, spit flying, smacking him in the face with his cover. Eventually, the recruit broke down and silent tears started streaming down his face. The D.I. took his finger, wiped a tear from the recruit's eye, and licked it, telling the recruit, Now I own your soul. Freaking intense. One recruit in my platoon was getting IT'd, and the D.I. took his soul. Then, I crap you not, the recruit responded with, What soul, sir? The DI let him go get back online. Story 12. When I was in boot camp, there was one evening near the end when the only drill instructor present at the time had to run to see the first sergeant for some reason, forcing him to leave us alone for a few minutes. Normally, he would have gotten a drill instructor from a nearby squad bay to mess with us the whole time, but it was almost over, and he was the junior DI and not really into messing around with games. So he simply said, Just don't run around screaming naked. He wasn't gone for 30 seconds before three recruits were galloping around butt naked screaming. Looking back, it was highly indicative of how the next five years of my life would be. Story 13. In the barracks where I did my basics, we had cubicles and bunks, were separated by half a wall. My bed and the bed of the troop next to me were both against that half wall. Part of our layout for inspection was a specific set of gear on the bed. One morning, our platoon sergeant decided that the bed layout of the troop next to me was utter crap. So the sergeant flipped the mattress so hard, it landed on my bunk covering my layout. So after the sergeant finished reaming out the troop next to me, he takes one look at my bunk and starts reaming me out because apparently I think I'm special and deserve two mattresses. Story 14. 
After the first breakfast there, we headed back up to the compartment to get ready for the day. A rock yelled, port side five minute pump and dump. I whispered to my bunkmate, I need a little more romance than that. Chief overheard me somehow and got up in my face. I had to follow him to the head, then stand in front of the mirror and point at the mirror and say, you're an idiot. Then point back at myself and then say, no, I'm an idiot. Forced to keep that up for 30 minutes. I will never forget most of the stupid stuff I did or said at basic in the Navy. Story 15. There are so many stories to choose from. One of the funniest is who we had to salute. Every living being. Literally. So I'm walking back from a med appointment I had when a squirrel crosses my path. So I render a snappy salute and bark out a good morning, sir, just as an officer is walking across the street from me. He ran across the street to investigate just who the heck I was saluting. I responded, the squirrel, sir. He said, what the F? You saluted a squirrel? Yes, sir. Who's your company commander? Petty officer Shanks, sir. Okay, move on, dumb butt, and stop saluting squirrels. Yes, sir. Story 16. A woman in my company was from Africa. She had a graduate degree in some science, so she was pretty smart, but some things were lost on her, especially figures of speech. When we were on the firing range, we were told to keep the rifle up and down range, meaning no matter what way you were facing, the end of the rifle was in the air and pointed down range. She didn't get that and swung her rifle all over the place. Everyone hit the ground. One of the drill sergeants yelled and asked her if her brain took a crap in her head. She didn't understand that either. Story 17. Paris Island. Port side got to shower first. The starboard side next. Floor is wet from the port side. Girls in one size fits all shower shoes in various stages of undress trying to rip off our bras and undies because we have less than 60 seconds left to shower. Suddenly, girls start slipping on the wet floor. Once the first girl went down, we all went down, piling up on each other. Picture wet, naked panic with our drill instructors yelling as the background music. Not sure if genuine military experience or corn movie opening. Story 18. One of the guys fell asleep during fire watch. One of the drill instructors ambushed him and told him that he was now unalive. So then he had to go around being a spooky ghost. So he has to walk around with a sheet over his head, booing and shaking everyone's racks. It would have been hilarious if I wasn't so darn tired. If I was sleep deprived and saw some dude in a white sheet over my bed, I wouldn't think he's a ghost. Story 19. We had a kid in my boot camp platoon named Jackson. The senior drill instructor was Sergeant Jackson. Poor recruit Jackson was known as Recruit Laundry Number 38 for the whole time because he didn't rate the name Jackson. We had a private named Hoar. The drill sergeant took one look at his name and said, Too easy. Never mocked him for it. Story 20. One time this guy decided that he would test out his newly stealth skills by leopard crawling up to a room. A massive eastern gray male who was ripped as frick. He was from the city and had never really seen kangaroos outside of zoos. He learned fast. The seco section commander was in stitches whilst we pulled the room off him. Story 21. We had a guy who didn't want to wake up one morning, so the DS flipped him and his mattress on the floor. Plot twist. He had gotten us all smoked horribly the day prior, so one of the other guys sewed his blanket to his mattress. Dude couldn't get out if he wanted to. DS had to cut him out. Story 22. Had a guy who liked to do handstands in the shower. One of those, haha, <laughs> I make you look at my junk type of do bags. He quit after someone karate chopped his balls mid-handstand. Story 23. Couldn't pee during the drug test. Had to stand in front of my platoon, drink a whole canteen, and yell, pee dong pee, while scowling and making a disappointed face at my crotch. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.